Okay, we're about to, the live is working now. Um, can top are you there? Uh, yes. Okay, sorry, there was a bit of technical, um, yeah. Let, let me help share on the, uh, it's, it's on Facebook now, right? Yes, I will, I can send you the link. Okay, uh, already shared. Okay. Yeah, more people now joining. Nice. Okay, um, I guess we can start now. Um, first of all, welcome everybody. I'm sorry for the technical um, difficulties. Um, it just, um, Zoom kind of shut down, but it's okay now. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, thank you so much, Quintop, for coming to join us. And he'll be talking about cryptocurrency. We're really excited to hear what he has to say today. And yeah, you can go ahead and talk. Thank you. Um, nice to meet you all uh, here today. Uh, so today we have about an hour to, to talk about uh, cryptocurrency and the future of, uh, of the financial system. Uh, it's going to be one of the most uh, important session uh, because our world is, is changing and it is changing really fast now. And when you guys, uh, you know, enter universities, when you guys, you know, graduate from the universities, uh, it's, it's going to be a totally different, different world from today. So it's, it's very important that we see this vision going forward, what is about to happen, especially in the financial uh, space. Um, first of all, let me quickly share the slides. Um, could you guys see the, the slides on my... Yes, we can. Okay. So let me quickly uh, int introduce my, myself. Uh, my name is uh, Top. I have been in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space in Thailand in Thailand for eight years now. Uh, within those eight years, I founded two cryptocurrency companies. Uh, the first one was called coins.co.th, one of the very first uh, Bitcoin wallets uh, in, in the country. Uh, that was eight years ago, uh, 2013, 2014. Um, back then, a lot of people did not understand what Bitcoin was. Uh, it's, it's not like today. Um, and we gradually grew the company, you know, uh, and eventually there is a company called Gojek uh, that came in and acquired the, the group coins. Then, uh, and then now I am running uh, BitCup. BitCup is one of the you know, fastest growing startup in our country right now. Uh, BitCup has been around for three years and three months. Now we have uh, 500 plus uh, employees in the company. And, you know, last, yesterday, we just did an all time high in terms of trading volume. Uh, we did 13,000, 13 billion baht uh, per day now in trading volume. And the BitCup exchange is now on this, in the top 17th uh, exchanges in the world. So uh, we are on our way to becoming one of 
uh, Thailand's first, very first uh, unicorn. Uh, so, you know, we are doing something very, very exciting. Um, right now, there are four companies under our, our group. Uh, and if, you know, people in Thailand want to trade Bitcoin to buy or sell digital currencies, they usually come, come to BitCup. We are, we are the largest exchange, a regula fully, fully regulated exchange in the country. My background, I was reading economics uh, at school for my undergraduate and master's. So let's, let's talk about cryptocurrencies. Usually, you know, most of the breakthrough technologies in the past, they follow the same pattern. And that pattern is, is this. Most people would be laughing at the pioneers, the minority group of people that are pushing the new technological frontier forward, right? People usually look down, despise, scared of new things. It's human nature, right? And it happens all the time in the past with new technology. This is the, the pattern has, that has been around for, you know, since uh, history. If you look at the uh, automobile industry, cars, Back then, when the first automobile uh, came out, people were scared of cars. People despised cars. Right? People looked down, people laughed at this machine. They, they were saying that this machine is slower than horses. Cars, you know, break down all the time uses expensive gasoline that cannot be found anywhere. Um, and especially, especially it, it runs over people. It, it runs over people. So it kills people. Um, and even the press, they were attacking automobiles all the time. You know, this machine ran, ran over people again and again and again on, on the news, always on the headline. Is a death machine, all the press were saying back then. Death machine, death machine, death machine. So bad that, it, you know, the image of a car was fully destroyed. People were scared. So bad that in 1896, the UK government came out with a new law called the Red Flag Act. Uh, the regulation forces, you know, us to have at least three crew members in order to operate a car. Right? The first one, the first person is a driver. The second person is an, an engineer that sits together with the driver to supervise the engine. And, and the third person is a guy with a red flag. Right? He would run a hundred yards in front of a car and warn the pedestrian that the, the death machine is coming this way. Do not go anywhere near it. Uh, it's gonna run, run over you, right? it's gonna kill you. This was, this was a regulation that came out in 1896 in the UK. You know, after this Red Flag Act law came out, uh, the UK, all, all, you know, completely lost the automobile industry race. Because instead of seeing the potential of new technology, they allowed fear to define their reaction. Right? They forced a car, right, to run after a guy with a red flag. We did not use a, you know, a car for it, to its full potential because a guy with, with a red flag is obviously slower than riding horses, right? So people back then went back to ride horses because it's, it's much faster, faster than a car. Completely lost the automobile industry race. This pattern happens again and again in technology. Right? If, you were, if you were talking about electricity, when it first came out, people were scared of electricity. They were saying that this thing is going to burn your homes down. It's gonna, it's gonna kill you. Let's use candles, right? Do not go anywhere near it. Uh, 
uh, it happens again and again in technology, right? It's gonna, people back then were saying that electricity is going to kill you. It's gonna burn your house down. Do not go anywhere near it. There were only two pioneers that saw the potential in electricity, right? Uh, Nikola Tesla and, and Thomas Edison, AC, AC, ACDC, right? Uh, cur current war. What I'm trying to, to, to share with you guys here is that all of the most destructive technology, they have the same pattern. And that pattern is that, you know, most people are skepti skeptical at first. They despise the pioneers. They, they laughed at the minority group of, group of people that are pushing this thing forward. But by the time they, you know, they, they realized their industry is about to change forever. It's too late. Usually this is the, the pattern in the past. Uh, same with Bitcoin. I don't know. I don't know if you guys were around. But, um, remember uh, in the space eight years ago, what did most people say about Bitcoin? People said that this Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. Bitcoin is drug money, dark money, right? dark market, toy money. Do not go anywhere near it. It follows the same pattern. Right? And, but technology itself is neutral. It depends on, on how you're, you're using it, right? Whether you're using it in a good way or in, in a bad way. If we were to use a hammer, a technology, a hammer to, to hit people, Obviously, it's a bad technology. But if you, you were to use a hammer to build houses, obviously, it, it will leverage right, uh, for your productivity. Right? It will help you build houses um, better. It's good technology. If we were to use a car to run over people, it's a bad technology. But most people don't, don't use a car that way. Right? It, it is a miracle. It allows humans to travel faster than horses. Right, for the first time in history. Electricity, you know, it allows, it's a miracle. It allows uh, us human to turn nights into days. Same with Bitcoin. If we were to use it correctly in the, in the right way, we can do so much more that the current financial system cannot offer. It's a miracle in the financial space, in our industry too, right? It depends on the usage. Technology itself is neutral, not bad or not good. No, it's neutral. But what is, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the world's first decentralized digital currency. Right? Keyword from that statement is decentralization. We have been using digital currencies for a long time. Whether you guys know it or not, we, we have been using it for a long time already. Have you guys played uh, uh, Ragnarok or the wor World of Warcraft? Uh, you know, game game items. If you were, we were to to send ten swords to your friend, that's one type of digital currency. I don't know if you guys have used PayPal in the past for sending money across. That's digital currency. Right? Have you guys ever transfer money via a bank app? Uh, a local wire transfer. That is one type of digital currency. Banks don't really move money around in bags, in you know, paper money around anymore, right? Um, we have been using digital currency for, for a long time. Um, but in the past, the digital currency that we've been using are a centralized digital currency. It means that you know this type of digital currency can be controlled by an entity, an, an entity, a company, or a government. Um, until two thousand and eight, there's this there's this guy called Satoshi Nakamoto. Right? Uh, he right now he's in the top twenty most richest people in the world, but we don't know who he is. Who he is? Satoshi. He's the founder of uh, of Bitcoin. In 2008, he wrote a white paper called Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. So roughly 14 years ago, 
right, 13 to 14 years ago. And in 2009, at the start of 2009, the Bitcoin protocol, or Bitcoin application came out. So, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, it's been around for 30, 13 years now, but it is the world's first decentralized digital currency. It's a digital currency that cannot be controlled by one entity, one single entity, right? It cannot be controlled by one single company. It cannot be controlled by one single government. Everyone can join and co-govern the network. And the reason why we can do this is because of the blockchain technology, right? Everyone can become a validator node by running a Bitcoin mining operation on the back end to validate, to validate transactions uh, for people around the world. It's like a backbone of Bitcoin. Right? And on the front end, people can use this digital currency you know, in the same manner that we have been sending money on PayPal, on bank apps, on you know transferring ten sorts of and game it game items, these are all digital currencies. But now we are in the world of uh, decentralization. It cannot be controlled by one single entity. And the good thing about this decentralization is that it removes middle middlemen, right, uh, intermediaries, uh, redundancies, uh, or the deadweight loss from the ecosystem. Right now, when we are transferring money, wire, wiring money from Thailand to, to the UK, if we were to use a centralized uh, digital currency, the, uh, we usually ended up paying around 5% fees for international transaction fee right, and the exchange rate. And usually we have to wait for two, for two days before, uh, before the money arrives. And, you know, in just one moment, sorry. Uh, can you guys see the, the screen? Um, you know, right now with the current financial system, when we, when we are wiring money from Thailand to the UK, we pay 5% fees. Uh, we have to pay for, for the exchange rate and for the transaction fee. We have to wait for two days before the money hits the bank. These are inefficiencies, right? These are the, what we call the deadweight loss to middlemen, intermediaries. And the reason why there is this deadweight loss in the system is because Thai banks do not trust the UK banks. They have different systems, different owners, different formats. So they relied on an intermediary called uh, the uh, International Clearing House, right? Um, and they usually charge fees and takes a few days to process. And the cost is, is upon customers, right? With cryptocurrency, for the first time in human history, we can transact without the need of any, you know, intermediaries. So we can save, save up on transaction fees, ex exchange rate, and also time. Right now we can send money across with Bitcoin at home, on your sofa, on your bed. You, you, you're just moving your thumb on your BitCup app. You can send money across to the UK Within, within 30 minutes and the money would arrive instantly, you know, in a frictionless manner. This is magic in our uh, generation. You can send 10 baht, 20 baht, micro payments overseas. You can send 10 billion baht, right? 2 billion baht and you would be ended up, ended up paying around 18 baht fees, which is nothing right? uh, to the miners. So for the first time in human history, we are able to transact value in the same manner that we have been transacting information in the last 10 years. Frictionless, global, instant. 
imagine sending money across is going to be as easy as sending line stickers arriving instantly frictionless globally globally and uh, zero cost this is the future of finance and it is already happening now and by the time you guys graduate from universities there will be a whole lot new applications uh, coming out and redefine the whole you know of the financial industry all together which is very very exciting uh, once in a generation you know these things you know, usually come out you you guys are going to witness another disruption right? apart from the internet i don't know i don't think you guys have seen the world before the internet right internet is a big disruption it changes you know virtually everything uh, and what we're talking about here is 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 the second disruption wave that is coming uh that is going to change our our world by the time you guys graduate from universities very exciting but why is bitcoin so destructive you know disruption is when a totally new thing that did not exist before that you know that come out and change the, the uh, behavior of customers right very disruption uh, disruptive uh, facebook is very disruptive it changes the way we transact information forever right um, let me tell you guys a story uh, about seven years ago eight years ago when i founded my first company um, a lot of people were against it because it's a pattern right? it's a human nature to be scared of new new things everyone around me was going against me even my parents my dad was not very happy uh, with my first uh, venture he you know uh, as with everyone else's back then thought bitcoin was a ponzi scheme right bitcoin was a drug money dark market uh, toy money right so we had a lot, a lot of arguments within the family. Uh, I saw this vision that this thing is going to change our, our world eight years ago, but my parents did not see this. But you know, they were worried about me. We had huge fights all the time. One day, um, I got into a fight with my dad and I had to prove him wrong, right? That what I was doing is not a Ponzi scheme. So, you know, I'm the oldest brother in the family. And usually the job of the oldest, the responsibility of the oldest brother is to send money to my sister in the UK. In the UK. She was still studying. I was the first to graduate right? um, to, to pay for her tuition fees. I remember founding the first company uh, in the uh, spare room. Uh, I have a, my, my parents, uh, they have a clothing shop at Purtu Nam Sen Center. I was using this spare room upstairs as my first office. Remember that day I was sitting in my spare room. I asked my dad to transfer 200,000 baht to my Gasigon bank account. And I, I showed him what Bitcoin could do. Right? Within 30 minutes, uh, without leaving the shop, right the money hits the bank in the uk my sister her name is nan nan, nan called back uh, to to my dad and she said that the money already hits the bank why is it so fast this time my dad was shocked and usually it takes two days for the money to arrive from thailand to the uk i haven't even left the shop it's been 30 minutes and the money already hits the bank in the UK without none realizing that I was using Bitcoin as a trans as a transactional protocol back then. But that's not the end of it, right? None said that I thought I asked you to transfer me 200,000 baht. Why did you transfer me more money than I asked? Right. My dad said, no, I, I, I literally transferred 200,000 baht to your yeah, top, right, to me. You know, for that, that day, that single transaction, I also made an extra 5% profit on that transaction. 
transferring money from Thailand to the UK. Okay. So, um, you know, my dad was shocked for the first time in his, his, in his life, transferring from money from Thailand to the UK, you can make more money with that transaction. Usually you lose money on that transaction because you have to pay for exchange rate and the uh, transaction fee, right? So, you know, we started to understand each other more, right? My dad said, top, um, with this company, I think, you know, Thai customers would like it. <laughs> you, you're helping people transferring money across overseas and ended up, ended up with more money. People would like that, right? People would enjoy that. Um, so Bitcoin is very disruptive, you know, for, after that phone call, it's that moment when, when, when you, when you ride, when you drive a car for the first time, you never go, go back and ride horses, right? That moment when you experienced, uh, exposed, you're in, when you're exposed to emails, you're not going to be going back and write letters to friends again, right? Or that first moment when you're exposed to Skype, Zoom, we're not going to go back and pay for the, the international phone calls again. So, you know, that exact moment, I was like, wow, Bitcoin is so disruptive. It's been eight years now and I haven't used a bank in the last eight, in the last eight years to transfer money across overseas. Right? So Bitcoin is very, very, very disruptive. And, you know, with the use of cryptocurrencies, this thing is going to extinct, you know, disappear from our dictionary remittance because distance is going to be out of the equation, right? When, you, when we are transferring value across. If you look at the information space, when you're sending a text to your friend, the distance doesn't, doesn't matter, right? If you're sending a line sticker to your friend in Chiang Mai, to, from Bangkok to Chiang Mai and then to another friend in Africa, in, 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 um, in India, for example, both of your friends would receive your message, your text at the same time, regardless of the distance. But when it comes to value, it doesn't make sense, right? Your friend in Chiang Mai would be receiving your money before your friend in India. And it's gonna be much cheaper to wire, to do local transfer than international transfer. We are already living in the 20th century. Sending texts across is free, instant global. But when we are trying to wire money across, it's expensive, mundane, you know, boring. It doesn't make sense. With the use of cryptocurrency, sending value across is going to be easy as sending, sending a text. And the distance would be out of the equation, right? It doesn't matter anymore whether you're sending money to your friend in Chiang Mai or you're sending money to your friend in India, they would be receiving the money at the same time, instant, global, you know, frictionless manner. So this is a breakthrough in the, uh, is a breakthrough in, in the tech, you know, te in the financial landscape, in the financial space. Even micropayments was not feasible in the past. It was not economical in the past to do micropayments. If we were to walk into a bank branch right now and you pull out your five baht coin and you were, you, were, you, were, you were to ask a teller to transfer this five baht coin overseas to the UK, for example, what would the teller tell you? The employees, bank employees at the counter. They would tell you that it's not feasible because the transaction fees is already much higher than five baht. But with a company that has been founded for three years and three months, you can do this, right, BitCup. With BitCup, you can transfer money, five baht, 10 baht, 100 baht overseas by just moving your thumb, sitting at home, watching TVs, right? Banks has been around for 120 years. They cannot do this. So it's a very, you know, disruptive, technology, even the unbanked. 
Right now, there are 2.5 billion people that are currently unbanked. And with the use of mobile phone technology and the internet, people can turn their mo mobile phone into a bank account and they can transact with cryptocurrency. All these freelancers in Thailand who cannot open a bank account, all these you know, unbanked individuals, we can create economic freedom, the ability to set up a company the easily, the ability to receive payments easily, the ability to transact, you know, doing business with the world, with just a mobile phone that is connected to the internet. Cryptocurrency is going to bank the unbanked around the world. You know, with virtually no zero cost. This is a breakthrough. Right? Or even payments. I don't, I don't know if you guys have heard of the recent news that PayPal is coming into the space now to allow cryptocurrency transaction. They allow people to buy and sell Bitcoin on, on PayPal and also merchants around the world. 20, 26 million merchants in, in PayPal app in the PayPal network can, can also receive cryptocurrency payments. You know, even even Tesla, Square, MicroStrategies, they're all coming into the space and they bought Bitcoin Reserve. Right? This is a very exciting year for cryptocurrencies. And the whole market capitalization is at uh, $2.2 trillion now. It took 11 years. Uh, it took no, it took 13 years for the whole cryptocurrency industry to reach a $1 trillion market cap, 13 years. But it took us one quarter to add an additional $1 trillion to the market cap. So obviously we are growing at an exponential rate, right? The first 13 years, we added, we added the first trillion dollars to the market cap of the overall cryptocurrency space. It took us three months to add an additional 1 trillion to the market, right? So uh, right now the whole industry is $2.2 trillion. And there are 8,000 other digital currencies out there, right? Bitcoin is only the first one. And the space is growing really fast. There are companies like BitCup around the world Right, 30,000 exchanges around the world now that are acting like a uh, Western Union network to allow money transfer across cheaply, instantly, in a frictionless manner with digital currencies. Even, you know, big banks like Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan, Stan uh, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan Chase, they are trying to figure out how to add cryptocurrency uh, dimension to their products as we speak right, this year. And they're all also offering their high net worth clients to be able to buy Bitcoin for the first time in 13 years since the uh, inception of uh, Bitcoin. So we have already gone past that um, criminal phase of the technology. Most, usually, you know, for any technology, criminal is the first to adopt the latest technology. And it makes sense because they're operating in a very high profit margin and very risky, the, I mean, high, high profit, high risk space. And in, in, order, in order to minimize, minimize their risk, they need to use the latest technology to minimize their risk. You know, uh, criminals was the first to, op to use a car uh, as a getaway vehicle, right? before the police, yeah, before the cops. Telephone was used to plot conspiracy. You know, same with Bitcoin, it, it follows the, the same pattern. But, but this year we're talking about, it's not, it's not 13 years ago, right? So, uh, right now we're talking about mass adoption. It's already gone past that early adopters uh, stage. We're talking about the, uh, the mass adoption phase now which is the most exciting phase, right? Where the, you know, Coinbase just IPO'd uh, two days ago at a 
hundred billion dollars market cap. You know, just to put this in in a scale, right? You guys know Grab, right? Uh, Grab Food and uh, the Green App. They are also going public via SPACs, special purpose acquisition uh, vehicle, right? The SPACs. They're going public at $35 billion. Coinbase went public at $100 billion market cap, three times bigger than Grab, right? So this is where a, you know, Coinbase is the leader in, you know, the leading digital currency uh, company in the world. They're based in, in the US, in San Francisco, right? And they just hit, they just went public. This is the Netscape moment, guys, where cryptocurrency is reaching mass adoption and acceptance globally. And this is the Netscape moment. Uh, I don't think you guys were, were around when Nets, Net, Netscape uh, was 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 ar uh, arrived. It was the first browser right, created by Mark Anderson to to make the internet uh, reach uh, mass adoption. Uh, same with Coinbase, right? When they did an IPO, it was one of the the IPO of the history uh, of the century, I think. And they're going to make digital currencies reach uh, this mass adoption phase. You know, it's, it's a very exciting era to be in, especially in the financial sector. So there are a lot of other applications uh, we can do with digital currencies. You know, usually technologies are like magic and not, you know, are not distinguish. Uh, you can you cannot really tell the difference between magic and technology for for for, for any uh, you know generation you're in. Usually it creates miracle. It allows us to do things that we cannot do in the past. Right? We cannot run faster than horses until until the invention of a car. We cannot turn nights into days until we invented electricity. We cannot do anything uh, with the financial system without you know, the invention of Bitcoin. We can do micropayments. We, we can bank the unbanked with a mobile phone at a virtually nothing, zero cost, right? Um, we can send large sum of money uh, in, a friction, in, a frac in a frictionless manner a fraction of a cost. In the future, uh, we'll reach a stage that people will be using digital currencies without knowing that they are using digital currencies. We call it humanization. Right? It's the same thing with us now. We're using Zoom without knowing that the, uh, the TCP IP technology is running on the back end. People are going to think of an app, think of, you know, of digital currency as an app. Let's use this app to transfer money across cheaply, instantly, without losing money on the way, right? without knowing that they're using digital currencies. It's going to be on the back end, humanization. Um, but also, even the, uh, the central banks around the world, they're launching their, their own crypt cryptocurrency. Have you guys heard that uh, about uh, the digital bot program? by project by the Bank of Thailand. Digital bot is coming out in Q3 this year, you know, hopefully. Um, digital yuan by the Chinese government has already been out. Uh, for for uh, over 2 million people already use, use uh, digital yuan, right? Libra, uh, you guys have, have you guys heard of Libra? The uh, digital currency created by the uh, Facebook and, and his, his friend group of friends, uh, 100 companies came together and create the consortium uh, digital currency. They just uh, incorporated the association in, in Switzerland, in, in Geneva, right? And they changed the name from Libra to DM. Right? Um, so we'll, we'll witness digital currencies and we will even use them without realizing that we're using digital currencies in the very near future. I'm sure you guys have Facebook, right? And I'm sure you guys use Facebook Messenger also.
Facebook uh, stickers, uh, Facebook uh, stickers around. So it's, you know, payments, uh, money will impact a lot of you know, every industry and the fundamental of money is changing, right? Um, before money was created on the assumption of uh, an IOU system, debt, right? We lifted money from gold uh, exactly 50 years ago in 1971. Right? Britain, um, we call it the post-Britain Wood era. Uh, post britain Woods uh, era, yes, uh, the uh, Nixon shock, right? Richard Nixon, uh, the president back then came out and said, guys, let's use dollars and we're not going to use gold to peg against dollar anymore. Right? So the US government can do this money creation uh, in the last 50 years. So money was built on the assumption of an IOU system uh, since 1971. Uh, we can do money creation, we can do QE, quantitative easing, one, QE, two, QE, three, um, until 2008. This guy complete, completely changed the assumption of money, the fundamental of money, from trusting the government to, uh, tr from trusting the government to trusting the logic of mathematics. People we, we will use digital currency if they trust the law of maths going forward. Right. Trust changes every generation to generation. In 1929, the, during the Great Depression era or prior to that, we were using gold as money, as a, ex, a medium of exchange. We trusted Yellowstone, Yellowstone back then, right? Or even in 1945, the Britain Wood era. That's when the we uh, the U.S. founded IMF and World Bank, right? 1945. That's when we trusted uh, dollars for the first time, right? But uh, we trusted dollars, U.S. dollars for the first time, and for every dollar that is issued, issued. The, there's an equivalent amount of gold backing up every dollar. It was pegged to gold. Up until 1971, that's when we lifted dollars away from, from gold. Uh, US, in other words, US government can print pretty much unlimited amount of money in the last 50 years. So trust changes every generation. We trusted in the Yellowstone system we trusted in the, in the government and now we are trusting the logic of maths going forward which is digital currency and since the fundamentals built on the on coding in an open space you know uh, in a open source manner people are freely you know open to attack bitcoin in the last 13 years anyone can try to hack it anyone try to attack it anyone you know anyone can can try to change the algorithm, but it has proven in the last 13 years that nobody can hack Bitcoin. Nobody can change anything, any algorithm. You know, they cannot alter anything. Uh, it's time tested in the last 13 years that this money can operate in an open space, in an open source uh, manner, and that's why. This year, it hits the point that all the big companies, big corporations are coming into the space right, to, uh, to buy Bitcoin as their reserve currency, to hedge their purchasing power, to hedge their purchasing power against inflation. Because during COVID, the US government is printing out a lot of money to bail out the uh, SMEs which is 90% of the economy. This crisis is different from the 2008 crisis. I don't know if you guys remember 13 years ago, there's this financial crisis in 2008. Lehman Brothers went, uh, went broke, right? um, got shut down. Uh, you know, bankers lost their jobs from Lehman Brothers. 
uh, the, U the US government stepped in, called all the 25 banks CEO in one room and they wrote 25 checks to bail out banks in billions of dollars back then. We did the first QE in 2008. QE1, a quantitative easing, printing out money because the interest rate hit the floor, 0%. We cannot do monetary expansion. But this time, this crisis, we're talking about the biological crisis, the COVID. And the guys that got affected are, are the uh, SMEs, which is 90% of the economy. So same with the US, right? SMEs are 90% like, are, are of their economy too. And the US governments cannot just call all this, you know, call up SMEs in one room like they did in 2008, because it's literally 90% of the economy. So billions, billions of dollars is, is, is no longer feasible. It's not enough. They are printing out money in trillions of dollars, right? 1.9 trillion dollars stimulus package got approved already. That means, you know, since we lifted ourselves away from the gold standard in 1971, you know, this 1.9 trillion dollars stimulus package is the the equivalent of 40 percent of all the dollars in circulation that are out in the last. 12 months. You're not hearing this wrong, guys. All of the world's dollars, right, 40% of all, the, all of the dollars in circulation came out in just 12 months. But we have been using this fiat currency in the last 50 years. What does that mean? It means that you know, in the first 49 years, only 60% 60, 60 of the dollars came out. And it took, just, took us just one year to print out an additional 40%. Anyone study economics here? Do you guys know what was happening to dollars if this is happening right now? Is that a good thing or a bad thing when, when, when you have more money, a lot more money out in the economy, uh, too much money out in the economy? Um, from, you know, from, if you were to ask people on the street, they would say, this is a good thing because you can print money, right? you can print unlimited money. But if you were to ask an economist, they would say, no, uh, you will experience you know, uh, inflation, hyperinflation with that amount. Right? The money would lose value quickly. And this is what we are experiencing with dollars. 40% like of all the uh, dollar in circulation came out in just 12 months. And that is why all the big companies with cash, with a lot of cash, like Tesla, like, you know, Square, they are trying to hedge their purchasing power, trying to make sure that they're, they, they're not, their purchasing powers are not being inflated away by this QE in trillions of dollars. So Tesla moved about 8% of their cash holdings to Bitcoin, to buy Bitcoin which is $1.5 billion worth. They got about 35,000 Bitcoin, right? Um, MicroStrategy got about 70, 71,000 Bitcoin. Grayscale, we're talking about 300,000, uh, three, 300 billion here, I bought here. I mean, stocking up on, on Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, it's a very exciting era. Um, money is about to change. Right. We're changing the way we think about, think and use money for the first time in 50 years. And the evolution, if you were to study uh, um, the evolution of, the history of the evolution of money, um, I can tell you that it changes every 50 years, right? It, prior to 1929, we were using the gold, the gold standard era. We were transacting in gold as a medium of exchange. And this Great Depression hits uh, because the gold is too deflationary by nature, uh, cannot keep up with the uh, productivity in, uh, in goods and services, right? the industri industrial revolution phase. 
So we, we were experiencing this, the Great Depression as a result. If we were to ask a macroeconomist, then we changed to we, we, the money, we, we changed to a new system called the Bretton Woods system in 1945. We used dollars instead of gold, but for every dollar issued, there's an equivalent amount of gold backing that dollar up, right? Then in 1971, we, you know, we have this Nixon shock. Richard Nixon, president back then came out and said, guys, let's use dollars. Let's continue to use dollars. We cannot keep up with the gold uh, mining to fulfill the demand, the uh, productivity growth, the uh, demand for uh, the medium of exchange to, to keep up with the uh, goods and services that are being produced. So after 1971, we have this money creation. We can print a limited amount of money without having gold pegging to the currency. So we changed, you know, the word money. We were using money in the, you know, in the first hundred years until 19, 1971. That's when we changed money to currency. There's a big difference between a currency and, a, and money. Right? So we have been using currency. It's a promissory note by the government. You can redeem, if you were to look at the dollar bill, you can redeem values from the government anytime. This is, a, this is not money, this is a promissory note. And so we've been using currency in the last 50 years. And in 2008, there's the, another crisis. And then in 2009, Bitcoin application came out. A quick history there you can recognize two patterns. The first pattern is that money changes every 50 years, right? And the second pattern is that it changes after a crisis. 1929, the Great Depression, 1945, Britain Woods system, right? 1971, the post britain Woods system. 2008 is another crisis. If we were to count backwards, 1971, that's when we started using fiat money, fiat currency up to today, 2021, that's exactly 50 years right, already if you were to do the maths. So we're, we're, we're in this year that the definition of money is about to change from the IOU system to the logic of maths, to code. Money is code, yeah, guys. Yeah, we are living in the digital world, digital economy. So money must be digital also to match the nature of this biggest economy, digital economy. So money is code right now. Money is, money is logic of maths, right? So, and since if the fundamental changes from a, you know, paper to code, all the players on top, they must change in their nature also. If we were to use money as paper, money, then you have we need we need counting machines right you know, to count notes bank notes we need bank branches to operate right we need vault uh, physical vault we need we need ATMs but if we were to change the fundamental of money to code to to logic of maths then all the upper layers must transform themselves right we we do not we do we don't no longer need um, uh, cash counting machines, right? We no longer need bank branches. We no longer need ATMs. We, we're gonna be needing BitCup, right? Uh, we're gonna need, need um, a decentralized uh, DeFi, right? decentralized exchange protocol. We're gonna be using, doing decentralized lending uh, because the fundamental is shifted from paper to code right? as money, you know, money as we know it is it, it, changing. Right. So all the players on top must change, must adapt. I I don't know if you guys were around when 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 music when when songs were tapes and CDs and MP3. Uh, I, I don't, you, you guys probably haven't seen any tape cat and a cassette or video DVDs and CDs and MP3. Um, music was physical, right? You, back then, songs, physical tape, physical 
CDs, physical videos, or DVDs, physical, like Sony Walkman, right? MP3. And all, you know, suddenly music is digital, digital, right? With, with YouTube, with uh, jokes, with Netflix. Imagine back then when music was physical, when songs were physical in tapes, in CDs, in a physical format, then all the players on top, have you guys seen blockbusters? It's a physical stores. If almost every corner has this blockbuster, uh, block, blockbusters in the past. Um, or Mangpong in, in Thailand, Lan Mangpong. Yeah. Um, those guys were building their businesses on the fundamental belief that music or songs are physical, like CDs, MP3. Um, DVDs, tapes, and when money changes its format to digital, all these guys disappear. Right? Blockbusters are no longer here. Uh, Mang Pong no, are no longer here. And what is thriving now? Uh, the players that are fully compliant with the format of music, right? digital music, right? These guys are thriving instead, like Netflix, Line TV, YouTube. Uh, even the players on top are different. So coming back to finance, if money is paper, you know, if money is paper, then bank, banks need branches, banks need ATMs, banks need counting machines, cash counting machines. But when we're talking about the fundamental shift in the definition of money or the way that people think about money or use money, uh, to to code to code or to logic of maths, then all the upper layer is about to change as well, right? All the upper upper layer players, like banks, uh, we need to build money uh, services on the uh, logic of maths too, because money is maths, money is code. So all the upper players they need to be able to program their services too. Right now they cannot program their services. It's a physical belief, right? But going forward, all the players on top, like financial institutions must be able to program their services because money's code, money's logic maths, right? Um, so there are a lot of applications around uh, digital currencies um, like donation, uh, we can transmit money across by scanning scanning a QR code uh, on YouTube on the tele TV screen for the first time in human history. About uh, eight years ago, there is this guy. He 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 went to the sports stadium, a televised sports stadium, and when the camera is on him, he pull out this big sign with a QR code and said, "And this sign said, send me Bitcoin." Uh, within the first 24 hours, he received almost 1 million baht from, you know, I, I don't know from anyone he has never ever seen in his life before. Because, because at that moment, when people were, were watching sports and saw this guy on camera on TV asking for Bitcoin donation, people would just pull out their phone, right? And, and, and click on two buttons. The first one is to, to scan the QR code in front of their TV screen. The second button is click send the payment. Within 30 minutes, Bitcoin already arrived at his wallet. We cannot do this you know, thing in our parents' generation. We cannot wire money via TV screen. We cannot wire money on the laptop screen. But in our generation, with the use of digital currencies, it allows miracle to happen. We can do this. Yeah. We can send even one baht, two baht, five baht, ten baht on the on a TV screen um, without paying a lot of fees and without wait, having to wait for days for the money to arrive. And we're removing redundant, you know, inefficient intermediaries from the ecosystem. So there are a lot of applications, um, and it's one of the fastest growing industry in the world right now, digital currency, digital currency and blockchain technology, right? And all of this happened 
is because of the blockchain that is running on the back end. Um, unfortunately, the time is over. Now it's 3, 3 p.m. We haven't got up to the blockchain technology yet, but it's, it's a technology behind Bitcoin. Right? Uh, it's a distributed ledger technology, right? a decentralized ledger that allows us to transfer this accounting unit across cheaply, right? Bitcoin across cheaply uh, in a frictionless manner without the need of intermediaries. Thank you guys. Um, may I ask if we have any time for questions? Sure. All right. Um, so I have one question from one of our viewers. And basically it says, from my view, if Bitcoin can be used as a payment gateway, do you think the regulators will allow to do so? Will it lower the power of the central bank? Sure. Um, so to be honest, the, the central banks uh, do not like Bitcoin. Uh, any central banks around the world, actually, because it's it's a new thing, and human, you know, we we're scared of new things. And we, we 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 don't want to lose control. Right? Uh, it's like the government with the internet. Uh, at the start, people were skeptical of the internet. It says uh, you cannot control information with the internet. Let's use intranet. And there are firewalls everywhere, right? But really, all the amazing things are happening on the internet, not the intranet, right? Not a closed system. All the amazing things, uh, all the innovation, happens on the, on an open space, on an open uh, public uh, uh, environment. And if it, innovation comes there, comes from anywhere. Um, and so the internet that was that is changing the world, not the intranet. Uh, same with Bitcoin. Right now, it's an open money, right, or public money, open space. Innovation can come from anywhere, but uh, the government is, is is rooting for the private money, right? the uh, private blockchain, right? um, in 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 the belief that they can control values. You know, it's the same belief that the government try, were trying to control information 20 years ago with the arrival of the internet. Um, but right now it's, it's, it's legal, completely legal, right? BitCup has a license from the Ministry of Finance, fully regulated by the Thai SEC. Um, so the whole industry is fully legalized. Uh, we have a rubber stamp from the government. Um, but to be honest, we're still lacking progress. We have a lot more to catch up right, with the innovation. Regulation needs to catch up with the regulation, uh, with, with the technology. Regulation is always behind uh, with any industry. Um, uh, I think digital bot will, will, will come out soon by the government, issued by the government. Uh, you, even the Chinese government already issued a digital yuan, right? two million users already use on the platform. Um, we cannot stop the world from moving move, moving forward, whether we like it or not, right? Um, to answer your question, I don't think the central bankers like Bitcoin, but they cannot stop it from happening. Uh, the only way to effectively ban Bitcoin or to stop the innovation is to, to ask every one of us here to stop using the, the internet, which is not possible, right? Uh, we're going to probably overthrow the government if, if they say that, right? We cannot use the internet. So it's, it's, it's already beyond that point that um, uh, Bitcoin is already fully decentralized. Um, the number of nodes already distributed are being distributed uh, to beyond the point that, that any one single point of failure or attack can, can shut it down, right? And they need to come in and regulate companies like Bitcoin, we are acting as a new financial institutions to work with governments as a data point for the country. Think of Bitcoin as cash. Government cannot fully regulate cash. We can meet every corner on, on the corner of every street and exchange cash. And those transactions are not, those transactions are not recorded on anything. 
because it's, it's a cash, it's a it's just paper money, right? No transaction, no rec, no record. Uh, um, that's why the government needs financial institutions. That's why the government needs banks as a data point, as a sing single point of contact to record down all the transaction, right? To note down all the transaction and you know, to as a, acting as a, as a data point for the country. With digital currencies, uh, with our BitCup, you guys can meet on, on the corner of every street and do that transaction. Uh, but uh, but a bit better in terms of you know transaction recording, uh, the, the transaction will be recorded on the blockchain. But it's going to be very hard to, to amalgamate all these information uh, with BitCup acting as a, a new bank, a new financial institution for the government. We are, we are the data point for the country. So it's, it's much easier to regulate the space with us, right? Uh, grouping everyone, uh, all the transaction together, uh, cleaning up, uh, uh, organizing all the data points for the country. Uh, so I think this is the best model forward, right? There are two layers, the protocol layers and the application layer. When the government cannot control the protocol layer, like cash, they control the application layer. They work with the application layer instead, like financial institutions, banks, or BitCup, for the case of Bitcoin. Right? All right, um, thank you for that. Um, any other questions? Uh, I have one from the live too. Um, someone asked, how can BitCup, um, Bitcoin, sorry, Bitcoin overcome current limitations, such as only seven transactions per second, as well as the present energy requirements for Bitcoin's continued global circulation example supposedly currently using more energy in a year than the country of belgium this person uh has done the research well yes, obviously um these are limitations of bitcoin right it consumes electricity and and the scalability issues um let me answer the uh, the energy consumption first um problem Right now, we are using electricity to uh, to feed computers, right? supercomputers, to to compete on the uh, you know blockchain validation on the uh, crypto uh, cryptographic hash function uh, that are out every ten minutes. Right? Bitcoin mining, in other words, and you know this energy consumption is huge. More than more than Iceland, more than Switzerland, more, you know more than Belgium already. But guys, if you look at the cost of solar power in the last 40 years, it has dropped significantly, 250 times in the last 40 years. In 1977, the cost was $77. You know, fast forward 40 years, in 2017, the cost is down to 30 cents, not even a dollar, 250 times cheaper not 250%, 250 times cheaper, right, in the last 40 years. And if we were to keep going at this rate, guys, electricity would be free, literally free, so long as the sun is still shining, right? We, we power the world with the sun. Solar power cost is down, you know, 250 times in the last 40 years. We are moving in an, an exponential manner to to answer your second question first you know bitcoin can con can continue with the proof of, of work uh, algorithm and what is going to be feeding on the computers is free electricity from the sun so you know uh, same with cars by 2023 electric 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 car would be cheaper than you know you, you know a petrol petrol car and it would be the majority that is running on the street, on the road. And, and what is feeding the car is free too, right? Electricity that is generated from the, the sun. Um, so that's not an issue, the second problem. The first problem is, is much harder, the scalability issues. 
Okay, this person has done the research well, seven transactions per second, right? confirmation per second. Um, and the reason is because of this blockchain confirmation uh, or the uh, equation that the cryptographic hash function that is out every, that, that is coming out every 10 minutes. And there's only one winner, right? the lucky miner, every 10 minutes. And this lucky miner must go to the unverified bucket, uh, pick up a bunch of transactions and confirm it on the blockchain, onto the blockchain in order to get new Bitcoin out uh, as a reward. Um, there are other you know, solutions being proposed uh, in the past, trying to solve the scalability issues. Um, you know, with the internet too, uh, there were this scalability problems back then. People, skeptics were saying that TCP IP cannot scale beyond emails. But in the end, we did scale TCP IP beyond emails, right? Um, so the world's moving much faster than we think. You know, in the past uh, 13 years, there are already quite a few solutions like sharding, plasma. These are all technical, you know, uh, solutions. Uh, or the Bitcoin Core and the Bitcoin Cash. Right, Bitcoin Cash is when you're expanding the block size, so you can pick up more transactions every 10 seconds. Or Bitcoin Core is a SegWit activation. Uh, you can do uh, off-chain transaction uh, to not use up the memory, blockchain memory for everyone on, on the main blockchain and only use the, the final amounts once you shut down that off-chain channel. So these are technical details and technical solutions. Uh, but you know, since this person has done the research well, I would urge you. I would, I would give you a few keywords for you to read up more. Right? Uh, you know, Jeff Garcik was the guy that proposed uh, uh, in in the middle of 2015 about the uh, the Bitcoin Cash solution, block size increased. Jeff Garcik, you can read up on on this middle in the middle of 2015, and at the end of 2015. Uh, Peter Woolley, that's another guy, right? Peter Woolley proposed an, another solution. Like we call it the, we call it the SegWit activation uh, the, or the blockchain uh, Bitcoin core. Right? You guys can read up more on the different solutions proposed. They were arguing for two years and, and then eventually we cannot find the consensus. And so we, uh, there is a fork in the Bitcoin system into a Bitcoin core and a Bitcoin cash, right? Um, and with the Ethereum blockchain, there's this Ethereum 2.0 for the scalability and reduced cost purposes. Um, we have plasma and sharding solutions. Uh, all these are all keywords you guys can read up. Plasma sharding. Um, it's it's pretty technical, right? Very very too technical for normal people to to know. It's it's like do we need to know how we scale TCP IP? Like we don't really need to know, right? We just need to know how to operate an email or how to operate a Zoom app okay, for normal people. But to answer a short answer would be, I believe that we will go beyond this point, just like TCP IP did beyond email, right? We can scale TCP IP beyond e email eventually. We can scale Bitcoin beyond seven transactions per second eventually. Uh, and with the exchange networks like BitCup and other 30,000 exchanges around the world, there's this offline, off, off chain, we call it off chain transaction. People that are BitCupers, uh, you know, BitCup users, when they're sending money to other BitCup users, we don't need to use up the blockchain memory. We can confirm in a database first, right? Because we're sharing the same exchange wallets. So we don't need to eat up into other people's memory on, on the blockchain. Now there are other techniques we can scale the blockchain transaction. Doesn't have to group every transaction on rail. We can do an off rail. We can we call it off rail. Sorry, not off chain. Off rail transactions. Uh, right. We can do on rail, but it's gonna eat up memory for other people. Slow the blockchain down for everyone. Right. Uh, we can do an off rail transaction. Those already with BitCup account uh, have have the BitCup accounts already. Right? We can do an internal ledger ourselves. Same with other exchanges around around the world. 
Um, <clears throat> if anyone else has any questions, they can, yeah, go ahead and you can go ahead and mute yourself um, if you're in this call and ask away if you have any. Uh, can I ask one question? Sure. Um, so I know like with recently with Coinbase, um, users do not really have control on their wallet keys. Um, is there any initiative or, or any solutions that maybe um, BitCub or any other uh, cryptocurrency exchange software are taking to sort of let users have control over their own wallet keys? Yes, um, there, there, are, there are many other ways uh, to keep your Bitcoin, right? Uh, if you're keeping your Bitcoin on Coinbase or on BitCup, we call it a hot wallet solution. Uh, hot wallet is not safe, right? Uh, you have to rely on the credibility of a third party players to keep your Bitcoin safe. Usually you keep the, uh, just the amount that you need to transact on the hot wallet with BitCup or with Coinbase or the amount you want to trade. But to keep long-term, like 10 years, you use offline wallets, right? It's much, we call it, we call it a cold wallet, right? Not a hot wallet, cold wallet. You keep your, your own private key pretty much safe at home and do not tell anyone. And, and private key keys can be kept in different formats. You can have a paper wallet. You can have a hardware wallet uh, like Tracer, tracer.io. Uh, when you need to use your Bitcoin, you only plug in this hardware device with the computer. Most of the time it's offline right? and you have a seed recovery elsewhere. Uh, it's obviously, it's going to be much harder to use because uh, you operate your own private keys. There are pros, pros and cons. Uh, with, the, with your own private keys at home, uh, the, pros, the pro is that uh, it's completely up to your control full control, your own control. You have full control of your private key. You have full control of your money. But the con is if you if you lose your private key, no one can help you recover. It's lost forever. You, no one can move your Bitcoin, right? No one else. Uh, it's like trying to to find a, a stone in a galaxy, the, the chance of finding your private key. Um, uh, unless you have quantum computing, which is like another 10 years uh, away from the current computing power or the development progress, right? Um, um, another con is that it's harder, much, much harder to, uh, harder to use, to operate. Uh, you need to have to, uh, even paper wallet. You need to have a bit of a technical skill, right? You need to know what a seed recovery is uh, to keep it away from your tracer hardware wallets um, and and the uh, but but the uh, the pro about using an exchange or a hot wallet is that if you lost your password uh, we can reset the password for you right um, but the con is that you're not in, in full control of your money you have to trust a third party uh, player so I would suggest you keep money uh, if you were to keep on a hot wallet use a fully regulated exchange do not use a random exchange. They can run away with your money with no consequences, right? But if you need to keep long-term, I would not encourage you to keep with BitCup either, right? even a regulated exchange, because there's this chance of um, online online attacks or people you know, leaking out your, you, know, you, you, you could be leaking out your password. You should use a 2FA2, a two-factor authentication to the password that changes every 10 seconds on your phone to reinforce your security. Um, and there's this initiative called a multi-signature multi wallet where you can co-sign with other people too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, this space is moving uh, very fast. In the near future, there will be a much easier, you know, the, the solution is can, it can only get easier and easier going forward now. Right. Uh, in the future, you could be keeping your own private key without having to you to understand all these technical terms, right? Paper wallet, uh, seed recovery, right? But uh, you don't maybe you, you don't even need to know what a tracer is, right? Um, 
So I think in the next few years, uh, we we right now we also see uh, see big companies keeping their Bitcoin at a third party custodian solution providers, right? Uh, like uh, Coinbase Vaults or Zappo Vaults. Um, there's already a, a bank or banks coming into this space, acting as a custodian solution. So instead of just keeping your fiat currency or money at, at the bank, you can also keep your Bitcoin at a bank and you can forget your password. The banks will reset it for you. Right? Uh, they are acting as a custodian for everything, for your cash, for your Bitcoin. Um, the solutions can only get easier and easier from here. Thank you. Any other final questions? Okay, my apologies. Um, I just have known that uh, you have also asked the BitCup user if they would like to have the BitCup digital currency. So um, what is your opinion about this? The BitCup digital currency? You mean an, an IEO, uh, an, an exchange creating their own coin? Or because because Bitcoin is an exchange, we're not we're not a a currency, right? We are very financial players, uh, digital players. Um, oh, you you mean you you mean Bitcoin token? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, it's pretty funny. Like two days ago, I posted a survey survey to customers whether we should do an IPO, uh, like Coinbase, or we should do or we should do an IEO, like Binance, right? And the post, you know, the organic reach, he reached almost like a million customers from that post, one single post. And we gathered more than almost 5,000 comments right, in 12 hours. Everyone was like, uh, I think the, the, it was half, half, right? 50% was like, yes, let's do an IPO. Let's show the world that, you know, cryptocurrency is mainstream, mass adoption. The other half was like, Come on, top! You're creating a new financial world. Why? Why are you going back to the uh, Wall Street? Let's go on Wall Street, right? Don't do Wall Street, Wall Street. Yeah, you know, let, let's let's uh, democratize opportunities for everyone. Let's create your own coin. You are already acting in a, an, as an exchange. Why are you listing your exchange on other exchanges, right? On a traditional exchange. Um, so the feedback was half half. Oh, actually, the other. The other half, uh, it was 30, 30, 30, right? Uh, the first 30% 30, 30 was like, let's do an IPO. Another 30% 30, 30 was like, let's do Bitcoin coin. Another 30% was like, let's do both. Let's do an IPO and also an IEO. Right? Let's have Bitcoin token too. Um, so a lot of anti anticipation from uh, Bitcoin customers. And to answer your questions, uh, we're, we're in the process of preparing both, uh, but we we haven't triggered the the bullet yet. So we, we don't we we need, we need to think things through uh, first. Ideally, we want to launch both without affecting one or another, because we, we want to be a publicly listed companies and everyone can co-own Bitcup too. That's the original vision. Uh, but we also want to have our own coin to create more engagement and interactions with the customers on the platform. Right. We have an NFTs market coming out, non-fungible token market. We have a um, BitCup chain uh, initiatives, uh, our own chain and for decentralized applications. Uh, it's, it would be great to have our own coin too, to create more engagement like, like Binance. Um, so a lot of ideas right now, um, and we are doing both just in the meantime. But, but we haven't launched any of those yet. No BitCup token yet, no BitCup IPOs yet. If anyone came up to you and said, I know top, I have IPO quarters or I have BitCup token quarters, stop talking to that person, right? It's obviously a scam. Um, none of these are in the, in the market yet, it's just ideas, right? And we're pre preparing for both, but we need to decide first going forward which is going to be the, the main um, uh, strategy going forward. Um, so we're going to wrap up.
wrap up now. So we would like to take a food photo. So please, if you could, if you're in this car right now, please uh, turn on your cameras if you can. This is great, guys. Um, usually, uh, you know, people uh, at your age, I think at your age, wasting time at Paragon or something, like, and not doing anything productive. You guys are really learning about the future of money here. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very good time to spend your, your weekends. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming over to help us learn to come top. So, yeah. Okay, um, okay, we'll do a photo. Okay, I'll count down. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah, I'd just like to thank you all for coming and especially Kuntop for you know, spending his time to share with us all the you know, various topics of cryptocurrency and its history and that. Um, so it's, it's such an honor to have you here. Today. And yeah, if you want to see more events from us like this, make sure to check out the best Facebook or our other, other social medias. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you.